do a really quick summary of resultant forces, how to describe motion and how to draw a scale diagram. So a resultant force is one force and direction which represents overall the sum of all the forces acting on an object. OK, so there can be more than one force acting on an object and this tells you where it's actually going to move, so in which direction and with what size force. If they're acting in the same direction as each other, then all you need to do is add them together. So this is the example on the PowerPoint. 1630 to the right gives you overall a resultant of 90 newtons to the right. If those forces act in opposite directions, so 30 to the right, 10 to the left, you get an overall resultant of 20 newtons in the direction of the larger force, which is to the right. So you have to find the difference if they act in opposite directions. These force diagrams are called free body diagrams. So any object with arrows that are coming off it, pointing in the direction of the forces that are acting and at this correct length, depending on the size of the force, that whole diagram is a free body diagram. Now, what I did want to go through with you was forces acting at right angles. As you can see, I started to do this myself um, and then decided that I was going to record this video. So, so two forces acting at right angles. This is the example that is on the video, the long video in the PowerPoint, 30 newtons to the right and 30 newtons going upwards. So hopefully we know that just like a catapult or a slingshot, the object, in this case I've got a person, is actually going to go diagonally. Okay, you could say um, northeast. Now, to actually draw this to scale, you need to choose a scale, first of all, because I've got a very small space to do this. You can choose one centimetre to be one newton. And then you have to make the vectors top to tail. And this is a thing that a lot of people forget to do, but you can be marked down if you do not show this. So there are two ways of doing this. You can move this arrow up um, across. You can move this arrow across and attach it to here, like so, or you can move the bottom one and you can attach it to the top, like so. Now in the PowerPoint video, I move this one across and attach it here. So in this video, I'm going to do the different version and move the bottom one up. It doesn't matter which way around, as long as you have the top of one arrow connected to the tail or the bottom of the other arrow. OK, so three centimetres is how long I need my vertical arrow to be because each centimetre is representing a newton. And I'm now going to draw my horizontal vector from the top of the vertical one connecting to the tail of this one. So all I've done is I've taken this arrow and I've lifted it up so the bottom is connected to the top. Okay, top to tail. Then the diagonal is the resultant. So from the bottom of the first to the top of the second. So if I'm drawing this as accurately as possible with a sharp pencil, the length of that side is my resultant. And if you measure this with a ruler, I find that to be 4.2, I would say. Okay. Still drawing arrows on. Sometimes, just because it's difficult to see where the arrow reaches up here because you have two, um, two tops at the same time, sometimes you tend to draw a resultant with two arrows in the middle of it. So I say that that is 4.2 centimetres. Because each centimetre is one newton, that means that uh, this is then 4.2 newtons. Your angle, this angle here, is the angle that I'm going to measure from north. And as you may guess, because the sides are the same, it should be 45 degrees. So if you line up your protractor, there's 90 count it round to the side, it gets there. Now mine is slightly off. Of course, you do get a margin of error that you can use. Um, mark schemes are not always, they don't always say it has to be 45 and that's it. 
Um, I'm actually getting 43, okay, rather than 45. Um, but that's fine. And it, that will only be because my right angle up here is probably not accurate enough. You have to have a really sharp pencil and try as best as you can to get everything perfect with these, but you do get a margin of error in your mark scheme. It might say that the answer is 45 plus or minus two degrees, in which case I would fall within that leniency. Okay, the last bit then is describing the motion of objects. And I've put these very evidently in a different colour because these four phrases are the only phrases that you want to consider writing when a question says describe the motion of the object. So if there's zero resultant force, the object is either at rest or stationary or not moving, or it's moving at a constant speed. If the resultant is in the same direction as the movement, then the object is accelerating. And if it's in the opposite direction to the movement, then it's decelerating. All of these phrases stem from Newton's first law of motion, which tells us that unless an object is acted on by a resultant force, which is these two scenarios, unless acted on by a resultant force, an object remains at rest, stationary, or moving at a constant speed. Okay. So if a question says describe the motion of the object, only these four phrases are allowed.